Thank you very much, Karina, and good morning. Assalamu alaikum to all of you. Um, before I start the, uh, the interview with uh, Karma, let me just have a show of hands of how many people are here for the first time at the Development Climate Days? Good, 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 lots. And how many people have done more than two? Good, some old timers and some new timers. Excellent. Uh, so let me tell you a little bit about the history of this event. I started it many years ago when I was in IID uh, as a, a venue during the weekend between the two weeks of the COP where we can bring together practitioners who are working on development and climate at the same time and to come and spend the weekend together. It's normally a two-day event this year, we have to do it to a one-year event, one-day event. And the idea is to be informal. So you come in your informal weekend clothes, these are my weekend clothes. We don't, usually we don't allow ties, but we can make a few exceptions for those of you who have put on a tie. Uh, and we talk in first name terms. So I'm Salim, this is Karma, and all of us here are first name basis. And one of the objectives is to get to know as many of you, us, by the end of today, new people that we hadn't known before and make friendships. This is the purpose of this. So we, it's a weekend from the top. We are going to spend it in an enjoyable manner, make friends, and learn a bit as well. Learning is a co-objective, but not the primary objective. Making friends is the primary objective. So I'm going to start with uh, Karma and invite him as, for those of you who don't know, in the UNFCC process, we have a group of least developed countries, some of the poorest and most vulnerable countries, they operate as a group currently chaired by Bhutan. And we have uh, a number of positions that we are pushing forward in the negotiations. We're now halfway through that. Next week, uh, from tomorrow onwards, uh, we will be pushing them even further. Uh, so we've invited Karma to come and tell us a little bit about where we are in the negotiations at this point in time, but more importantly, what Bhutan and the least developed countries are pushing for and hoping to get by the end of next week. Thank you. Very good Sunday morning to everyone. Uh, uh, I must confess that uh, I'm not expert on the climate uh, negotiation, but I'm fully really informed my NTC group. Uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, I'm Karma and I'm based in New York. Um, basically, uh, I'm speaking on behalf of LDC group. Bhutan is the chair of LDC group on climate change uh, based in Guam, and then we are also taking lead uh, on the LDC group at the climate change in, in New York. I basically wanted to share about uh, something about the, uh, on the, on the climate change. We recently we had. Uh, let me start by saying that uh, that uh, that LDCs are are the most vulnerable country. They are the, we have 47 of the most vulnerable countries that have contributed the least to the climate change, but we are bearing the burdens of the climate change. And at the UN Climate Summit in, in New York in September, uh, last September, we, the, the, the LDC group has taken the leadership to, uh, and launched, uh, launched an initiative called Life Air which is uh, LDC, uh, LDC effective information, uh, implementation of, of, of adaptation and mitigation, which, which uh, where we actually, the vision of the uh, life here is to, is to have a climate resilient uh, uh, economies by 2030 and net zero emission by 2050. This is an initiative uh, by the LDC. We have taken the leadership uh, and come forward and say that this, we, we want to do this. So to, in order for us, for the LDC to achieve this, we need the support of the international community. And at the, the COP, uh, I mean the, we, the LDC has been very active. We, we, uh, we have been focusing on basically on several areas adaptation on loss and damage, uh, on article 6, uh, on gender, on, uh, on the finance, which are very critical for, uh, for the indices. Uh, while uh, there has been some progress in, in this 
these areas, but uh, the next few days will be very critical for, for us uh, to see some results. Thank you very much. Uh, so let me uh, fill in one of the issues that is a critical um, decision point here in COP25 in Madrid, which is on the topic of loss and damage. For those of you who don't follow this, this is about how do we deal with the impacts of climate change that are already happening. So they are beyond mitigation and beyond adaptation, which are both preventative actions. Loss and damage is now happening and we need to deal with it. In the UNFCC jargon context, this is a decision to review something called the Warsaw International Mechanism on Loss and Damage. For those of you who aren't familiar with the UNFCC, you have to learn a whole new language if you want to follow the UNFCC process. So I'm giving you a little bit of the UNFCC language on this. So the, the decision is a review of the WIN, the Warsaw International Mechanism. And what we are arguing for, the least developed countries, together with all the other vulnerable countries, and now all the developing countries have joined us, is we want finance for loss and damage. This is a very highly politically sensitive issue which the developed countries have refused to talk about. They don't want to talk about finance. It's a taboo subject for loss and damage. And we have tabled the proposal to open the door here in Madrid for financing loss and damage, which we are already getting pushback on. We have another five days to work on them. We hope we can do that. Sir, if you'd like to tell us a little bit about uh, the fact that we are now united on this issue, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, I mean, uh, this loss and damage is a very critical issue for, for, the, uh, for the LDCs. Uh, um, as, as Salim said, this is a very sensitive issue, issue for the developed countries. They don't want to touch uh, on the subject. And as you know, that uh, that uh, was a national mechanism. Do, as I said in the beginning, that uh, LTCs are are affected by not uh, by the by the climate uh, uh, climate change, but this this loss of damage. Uh, uh, what we, want, what we want to put forward here, uh, as Salim said, is that uh, we want to uh, have uh, uh, loss and damage, uh, as well. also the arm of loss and damage, to discuss more about, about the loss uh, in, the, in this call. And also, we also wanted to uh, reflect that uh, the loss and damage we, uh, we discussed we also want uh, in the in the COP as well as CAP. Very good. Thank you very much. And have you got a sense of where we are in the negotiations? Do you think we might be able to pull this off? Uh, as I said, that we, are, uh, we uh, from the LTC's perspective, we are, we are hoping to make some progress. But as I said, it's very, the next few days it's a very critical uh, time, and then we uh, we. I always hope, I mean, let's be uh, optimistic that uh, there's uh, something positive comes out of this uh, uh, this call. Otherwise, we will be failing the world. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Karma, for uh, giving us an insight from the least developed countries' perspective in these uh, negotiations. And we'd like to wish you and all the other vulnerable country groups good luck. I hope you can maintain one, just one final observation of mine having been. This is now my 25th box. I've been to all of them. So I have, I have a lot of experience of watching these events and also helping the least developed countries in them. We often, most of the time, don't get our way. Okay? We're small, less powerful countries. But occasionally, every now and again, we can get our way when we can get everybody united with us on an issue that we feel is morally right, right thing to do, and then those who don't want to do it, we push them into acknowledging that they have to do it. And Andy mentioned a little while ago the 1.5 degree temperature, long-term temperature goal was something that we did achieve in the Paris Agreement. We're hoping we can do that again here in terms of getting finance for loss and damage agreed by the end of the week. So keep your eyes and ears open and if you can support us, there'll be some civil society actions during the week in support of our stand. We hope all of you will then uh, be able to participate in that. Uh, and support us as we go along. Civil society support is extremely important for the vulnerable countries in the negotiations. We can't do it just by negotiators negotiating around the table. The big countries are far too powerful for the small countries to uh, 
persuade them to change their mind. But with civil society actions, sometimes we do. So please do help us. And thank you very much, Karma. Thank you very much.